How do you evaluate the sound made by a product? For products normally experienced at a distance, evaluation with a microphone measurement in an anechoic chamber works well. But when the sound production is close to the human ear, the sound is modified by an effect known as acoustic loading, and the measurement needs to closely simulate the human hearing system. The human ear is a complex structure, but in essence there are two parts that require modeling for accurate simulation. The pinna, which provides directionality, and the ear canal and middle ear, which control the frequency shaping and acoustic impedance. The middle ear, which includes eardrum and the three small bones called the ossicles, can be viewed as a very high quality microphone. The eardrum is positioned at the end of the ear canal. The ear canal modifies an external sound field with resonances that amplify the sound at certain frequencies. However, that's not the only problem to solve since the response of the ear also changes with how much the audio device closes off or acoustically loads the ear canal entrance. The first attempts at designing an acoustic coupler were aimed at telephones and headsets available at the time. In the beginning, the ear canal and pinna were represented as a simple volume. This eventually led to the IEC 318 standard in 1970. It was a coarse simulation of the human ear and modeling limited the frequency range to 8 kilohertz. The evolution to smaller, wearable devices with a wider frequency range pushed the need for an ear simulator with increased bandwidth and better accuracy. In 1981, a new simulation coupler, IEC 711, became standardized and known as a 711 coupler. With a range of adapters, it could be used for insert-type earphones and hearing aids. It extended the frequency range to 10 kilohertz. The growth of digital audio, the increased interest in binaural hearing, and the positioning of audio sources in 3D space led to research in developing a solution that could be used for wearable products. These products were mostly open to the surrounding environment and could not be measured accurately by simulating only the middle ear and simplified pinna. A more complete ear simulator was needed. It should integrate an acoustic coupler with an accurate representation of the pinna. Research showed that the pinna, as well as the head and shoulders, impacted free and diffuse field ear response. This resulted in the development of the head and torso simulator, HATS, launched in 1987. HATS soon became the world standard for testing telephones, headsets, and other worn audio devices. In 